We're currently, I think it's week four of rehearsals. Today we're fitting costumes, fitting, you know, working with props, fitting wigs. We're at full production. We are now in the paint frame and uh, we're just looking at certain sections of the ship rib itself. So we're just in the processes now of turning the basic structure into a finished looking piece of worn timber. So you can see there's lots stacked up ready to go that have had the first process done to them. There's a bit more finishing off over here, getting some more detail. Well, this is the first uh, bit of the design process. So there's a 3D model of the set, created in 1 to 25, created in both wood and timber and a beachy and cardboard. And that then is turned into a 3D drawing so that we can start to see that within the space. From that are drawn construction drawings to start to make the piece into reality. We've taken a lot of references from the Mary Rose because what's great about that is it's a, a, sh a ship virtually of the era in which the play was written, if, be it 50 years just before. You get a great cross-section through the ship itself. And very quickly, as I looked at these images, one of the first bits of inspiration for the play, it starts to relate to the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, in my eye. You get, the, you get the stalls level, the first gallery, and the upper gallery level. That instantly led itself to a, a structure that could fit within this theatre. One of the kind of greatest thrills of working of the RSC is having that body of expertise behind you as a designer. The weight of experience of costume makers and prop makers and painters and scenic builders. It's a kind of corny thing to say a family, but if you've worked together as much as I think we now have, this is probably my 22nd show, I think, for the Royal Shakespeare Company, you sort of know each other, how each other work, and I've come to really rely on their great skills and their expertise. I suppose one of the greatest challenges is starting to use materials that you've not used before and how they might all work together in the space, how they might react to the projection, how they might react to the lighting. This is the actual floor, so um, this is another major installation. So we basically pull out the whole existing stage of the RST and it gets replaced with this. You have to take these big risks and you have to, you have to challenge yourself artistically. It's better to do that when you feel surrounded by a volume of really talented people who will carry you along a bit. I feel I could only really do it in this kind of environment, to be honest. This has been quite a piece of engineering in order to work out how to build a floor that looks transparent, but is still strong enough to take actors walking around on. Hence all these uh, polycarbonate fins as such that go across the floor to construct it and support it. I'm always amazed and impressed with the sheer engineering skills and the sheer construction skills that are put into it. It isn't just about what one might imagine building scenery is all about. It's as complicated as architecture or bridge building or boat building or aeroplane building. It requires the same amount of very intense skills. It's massive, really. It's one of the biggest shows I think I've ever done at the RSC. We've never had the opportunity to do something quite on this scale. Now all these elements are going to finally come together and we start to see how all this planning and what that comes to do in terms of create this play at the centre of it, this rather simple, beautiful, magical play at the middle of it, which we mustn't overload with it. Um, but that's the thrill of starting to see Intel's support and Imaginarium's creative power uh, and the lighting and everything else and the scenic stuff that we do so well here at the RSC and just making us all work together as a team. Uh, and that's thrilling and that's exciting.